What's up, sons? It's Blindred with Seven Tech once again, and I have another how-to video for you guys today. Luckily, it's for new parts. We have new parts that have come in. We have a 5600X. We have a GTX uh, 3070, uh, now named RTX 3070 to get that ray tracing branding in. And we are getting everything built and put together, and we need to update the BIOS for the ASRock Tai Chi B550 motherboard to support the latest CPUs from AMD. Luckily, we don't actually need an older Ryzen CPU in this case because they have a BIOS flashback utility. That is a big selling point for these motherboards right now because if you buy any B550 motherboard, you're kind of just kind of taking a chance on it having the BIOS that supports the latest CPU. So if you aren't already on a platform uh, or on the Ryzen platform with an older Ryzen CPU or maybe you've sold that to get the new stuff, you might want to consider buying a motherboard that has this option available so you're not hunting down an old Ryzen CPU to update your BIOS. So in this case, once again, that's the ASRock Tai Chi B550 motherboard. And without further ado, let's hop into the how-to. Okie doke. So, first things first, you want to go ahead and head on over to the ASRock website and the support tab for the motherboard. In particular, this is the B550 Tai Chi. If you scroll down, you can click on over to manual and download the English manual. What you're going to find in the manual here is going to be the specific steps, which I'll leave a link, of course, down below for you guys to go check it out. But it's the specific steps for you to update your BIOS. Now, there's a couple important things here. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have a USB flash drive, that it's in FAT32, and so on and so forth. And then you're going to need to go ahead and get the latest BIOS. Going back to the support tab, you're going to go ahead and under support, click the BIOS option, and then you're going to download the latest BIOS for this motherboard. So in this case, it's going to be 1.52 or version 1.52. You'll click global. It'll download a zipped file down below. So then you're going to head on over to your downloads and then you will have your ROM here. All right. So you're going to right click the file and then you're going to go to 7-zip and extract here. Once it's downloaded, you'll have that BIOS right here for you guys to go ahead and take a look at. You're gonna to wanna to go to your USB drive. In this case, I named it BIOS. You're gonna right click and click format. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your file system is FAT32 and click start to go ahead and do a quick format. Keeping in mind, of course, that you're gonna lose all the data on the drive. So make sure you back that up somewhere else or use a brand new USB drive. Okay, so back into downloads, you're gonna right click and say rename, and you're gonna rename it BIOS, or excuse me, have it creative.rom, okay? In the case that you do not have file extensions enabled, you will need to get those going by going into Cortana and searching for file explorer options. And in file explorer options, you're gonna click the view tab and say show hidden files, folders, and drives. I just always do that. And this is the main one that'll get you what you need. You're gonna uncheck hide extensions for known file types, okay? Once you do that, you'll click apply and okay. We already had it, so we are able to rename it with the file extension .rom. Make sure that you double check and that you are able to rename them with the file extensions. Otherwise, it's gonna be named like creative .rom whatever it was. Uh, previously and that changes depending on the BIOS file. So here we're I'm going to leave it here and just do a copy and we're going to go our USB drive right click and paste it onto the USB drive do 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 and I am plugged into a USB 2.0 don't judge me we we didn't get that all <laughs> taken care of so once it gets copied over we will move on to the next steps which is moving on to the motherboard. Okie dokie. So your next steps are going to be pretty simple. After you've renamed the file and you have your USB drive prepped, you are going to plug in the 24 pin power connector onto the motherboard. There is going to be no need to plug in the additional CPU and there's going to be no need to actually turn anything on. You will need to turn the power supply on, excuse me, but you will not need to hit the power switch on the motherboard itself. So then you're gonna plug your USB drive into the USB BIOS flashback port. This is very important. It's not gonna work anywhere else or any way else or in any other USB drive port or you know in your PCIe slot. It's not gonna work in any of those things. It's only gonna work in the 
slot that is labeled as USB BIOS flashback. If you need help, check the manual and it should have it labeled down here. Of course, with a little red box, that manual we talked about earlier, and it'll say USB flashback port. Once you've done that, you're going to press the BIOS flashback switch for about three seconds and the LED will start blinking. You're going to wait until the LED stops blinking and at that point you will know that the BIOS is updated and the flashing is complete. However, if the LED light turns solid green, it means that the BIOS flashback is not operating properly. Most cases, this means that you plug the USB drive into the wrong USB port, which we talked about earlier. Come on guys, keep up. So that's going to pretty much wrap it up. Once you've done that, you can plug in your fancy, fancy new US, US, USB drive. Yeah, you can plug in your fancy, fancy new RX. Jeez, we can't even get anything right. RX, what am I even talking about? Your Ryzen 5000 series CPU, whether that be a 5600 XT, 5950, or any of those crazy ones. Let me know which ones you got down in the description or comment section, I mean, excuse me, below, and I'll be happy to chat with you about it. Come to our Discord if you need additional help, and if you brick your motherboard, it is not my fault. You need to follow all of these steps very closely, okay? Okay? Let me repeat that. Follow these steps very, very closely. These are all supplied by the vendor. And then if it bricks, you contact ASRock. Not me. I'm not support. That's ASRock. Okay. Glad we got that cleared up. Adios. See you next Tuesday.